and because I've already been standing for many hours. <laughs> All right. So this uh, this session is is flexible site building with fields and views, or as I like to call it, how I learned to build a mini fertilizer bomb using only my Swiss Army knife and WD-40 from watching MacGyver. <laughs> and there is a funny story behind that. When I was a young man, and many of you may be too young to even remember MacGyver, and many of you may have actually watched MacGyver when you were adults, but I was a young man when I was watching MacGyver, and I remember watching an episode where he built a mini fertilizer bomb using fertilizer, WD-40, and newspaper, and his Swiss Army knife. And so I decided one day to get all the kids in the neighborhood together, and we were going to build fertilizer bombs <laughs> using my Swiss Army knife that my parents bought me for Boy Scouts. That didn't go so well, and I was no longer allowed to watch MacGyver. <laughs> what I learned through that, though, was the value and the uh, practicality of a multi-purpose tool, and that's really what fields and views are for Drupal, are a veritable Swiss army knife that will turn you into a Drupal MacGyver, um, and really enable you to build a wide variety of websites and features and functionality. So, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you don't know yet, I'm Adam Gregory. Uh, many of you have probably already sat in on, on one of my sessions today. Um, I'm a Drupal themer, consultant, developer, and trainer. I've been using Drupal for five years, and I actually build and maintain uh, a dozen plus modules and themes on Drupal.org. And I've been involved in Drupal projects large and small. Additionally, I've actually contributed patches and code to the Views module. Um, so I am very uh, proficient and familiar with that module. Everybody in here, I assume at this point, is, is familiar with modules and, and such. You guys have sat through either the beginning Drupal session or the top module session so far, right? OK. Um, so what we'll cover, uh, we're going to obviously talk about field, uh, the field module and views. Fields, uh, or as they were called, CCK, Content Construction Kit in Drupal 6, Fields in Drupal 7, two different names, same concept, um, are basically a way that allow you to get various types of data in. Views is how you pull data out and display it. Uh, and we'll talk about how they relate and complement each other. And then the biggest part of this session is going to be about practical examples and demonstrations because I can talk about it all day long, but if you don't actually see how to use it and get walk, uh, have a walkthrough of what you can do with it, it's not really going to do you any good. And then, of course, we'll end with a, a little Q&A. So let's get going. What are fields and views? They're the fertilizer and the WD-40 in your Drupal bomb, and they're going to make your site explode with awesomeness. <laughs> All right, so fields. Fields are for data input. Um, you can think of it like this. You know, you have your nodes, and your nodes come by default. You can put a title, and you can put some text in it. But what if you have something like a product? You're setting up an e-commerce store. Well, a product has a lot more than just a title and a description. It's probably going to have images, and maybe multiple images. It's going to have a price. It's going to have a a UPC code, it's going to have a weight, it's going to have all these different types of data. Um, it's going to have a quantity. Um, so fields basically allow you to extend uh, a node type, a content type, uh, and allow you to add extra fields to that input form. So you can add a lot of different data types. Um, and it actually goes even beyond, in Drupal 7, it goes beyond just nodes. Um, there's a concept called entities in Drupal 7, and a user is an entity. So you can add fields to your, your default user registration form, uh, that now all users have to fill out a first name and a last name, and a phone number, and an address. And so now you've turned the basic users module in Drupal into a complete and total user profile, 
and you're gathering information on users that sign up for your site. Files, as strange as it sounds, can be entities. So you can add fields to files so that uh, you can add description to the file. Uh, you can add a screenshot to go along with the file or a preview image to go along with the file. Um, taxonomy terms, once again, uh, you know, tagging. Can, those can be field or entities, and you can add descriptions. You can add images to a, a taxonomy term. So, the what is and isn't an entity in Drupal at this point is only limited to what people have coded and turned into entities in Drupal Seven. So, there's a lot more that you can do with fields than just node content. But we're mainly going to focus on node content today, and we might look at users also. Um, but mainly, we're going to focus on nodes. Some examples of fields uh, would be text. So you want to add extra text input to your content type. Or numbers, you want to add some numbers to your content type. Or dates, uh, you know, a common, a common feature of a website would be something like an event calendar. Obviously, if you're gonna have an event calendar and you're gonna have events, you need to be able to input dates onto your node type. Files, whether it's images, documents, YouTube videos, uh, just general media. Um, that's an example of something that you could add with a field. And then things like tags or taxonomy terms, uh, which are part of the core Drupal system. You know, you, you add those to the fields in Drupal 7. They provide input widgets, so they provide different widgets and different ways you can input the data. And then they also provide different output formats, so they provide different uh, ways you can display that same data. So for an image, for example, you might have a, an input widget that actually allows you to crop an image at, after you upload it and size the image in real time, like on an image editor on your Drupal site. And then for an output format, uh, you might decide that you want it to output as a thumbnail or a certain size, or you could you know, maybe add a watermark to it. There's a lot of different things you could do, obviously. So every field provides different input widgets and different output and, and different display formatters. Views. Views is the most widely used Drupal module, and it is that way for a reason. Um, it provides a, an easy interface to display your data. Essentially what it is, is it is a query builder to get the data out of your the back end, the database in your system. Um, you know, so if you've ever used or had an experience with something as hideous as like Microsoft Access and you know getting data out and, and displaying it in different formats, views is similar to something like that, only a lot easier and a lot more uh, fun to use. So it provides some different display styles. Uh, so let's say we want to display a list of nodes or we want to display all of our user information in the table, or we have images that we want to display in a photo gallery grid, or we have images that we want to display as a slideshow, or even we want to actually plot nodes on a map, on a Google map. It can do all of those things, and even more that I don't have time to cover, but literally, if there's a way you want to display your data, uh, views is going to be probably the best way to handle that. So it's going to allow you to choose the data to display, whether it's nodes or users or files or taxonomy terms. It's going to allow you to filter that data down by defining, uh, I, only want, I only want nodes that were created be after this date, or I only want nodes that have an image attached to them. It's going to allow you to sort them, so you can say, well, I want to sort them by when they were created, or by who created them, or just alphabetically by their title. And it's going to allow you to, to do even more advanced things, you know, where you can combine results later on as you get more uh, comfortable with it, where you can combine users and nodes together. I mean, it's, it's very, very advanced, uh, how deep you can get into views, but it's very, very powerful, too. So how do they relate to each other? Um, 
As we've already mentioned, they really relate in the form of input to output. Views or uh, fields in CCK get your data in, and views gets it out to display it. So in any software, you're gonna need a way to input data, whether you're using a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or Drupal or you know, a, something like QuickBooks. You have to have a way to input your data, and that's what Fields provides you. And then you need a way to display that data, uh, and that's Views in Drupal. So you can kind of think of it as data entry versus data reporting. Uh, they integrate together out of the box, which is great, and they have even more integration together uh, available through third-party modules that you can download on Drupal.org, or when you get comfortable enough, write it yourself. So we're gonna uh, do some practical examples. Let's build some ums, and maybe that's a bad example, but let's go for it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do, obviously, is uh, go to our demo site. For those of you that were in my first session this morning, what is Drupal, this is the exact same site. All I've done is download views, um, so we just need to go in and by default, if you do the standard installation, you can see when you're looking through your module list, fields is already turned on. And it's actually already turned on with a bunch of different field types. So text, options, lists, numbers, images are already all turned on. And then if you keep going down, you'll get to views, which like I said, I downloaded and turned on already. And Views actually has a dependency in Drupal 7 on the C tools module. So if you just go to download Views, you have to make sure that you also go to the C tools project page and download that also, um, because it is going to require that. But it'll tell you. Um, you. You can see down here it's going to tell you, well, we need this. And it's not going to let you turn it on until you have it. So now that we have those turned on, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our content and you can see that we have a couple content types here. We've got an article and we've got a basic page. Um, now, we're running, we want to add events to our website because we want to add calendars and our schedule and we want a lot of people to come up to our stuff. So we say, okay, well we want to add a new content type called events. So we just go to structure, and in there, we've got a listing for content types. So we can go into content types, and it'll show us what's available. And so we say, okay, we've got those, but we want to add an event. So we're going to call it event. And you don't have to fill all this stuff out, but it's generally good to. Then so we could either just save it or we could save it and add fields. So we're going to add some fields. And so this is your basic uh, fields uh, setting page where we can add and delete and manage the different fields that we add. And you basically you get here from if you were to just look at that same content types page, you can see the uh, link over here for manage fields for any and all your content types will take you to this page. So the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna add a new field. And let's say we decide we're gonna have our events and they're, we're only gonna have a couple different types of events. So we're gonna create a field called event type. And we're gonna call this and every time you add a field, you give it a label over here, and then over here is a machine name. And this you know, gives you instructions on what characters you can use, but this is just a way that the database can identify it. And so it should be something, or it has to be something unique for a new field. And we're gonna select a field type, and we're gonna say, you know, we're gonna use a list so that we can limit what people can use. And it's gonna be a select list, Alternatively, you could use radios or checkboxes if you want to really use more than one. We just pick a select list. And then we can also do something like 
Uh, we we want to put it up here right underneath the title. So it's the second thing people have to fill out. So we're going to save it. And so now it's taking us to our field settings. So now we're in um, the event, and now the manage fields, and then now the event type field. So we've got different options for values. So we just want to say, um, we're going to call event number one pool party. Or it's, so you know we have, let's say we have a pool party every month on our calendar. So we're going to create an event type of pool party. And then we also have um, park days. You can see I have kids, obviously. That's what my life consists of, pool parties and park days. Um, and then we're going to have also, uh, let's call it study time. So those are going to be the values that are allowed. We're going to save this field settings. And then it's going to take us to another screen. And we can input even a little more uh, settings into this to define how this data is inputted. So we can say every event, if we, if we set this as required, every event has to have this filled out. If we don't check that, people can leave it blank. So that's something you have to think about. We can add some help text like this tells users what type of event. This is. A lot of times you may not need help text because your stuff might be pretty obvious, like event and date. That's kind of obvious. You probably don't need to tell people what that means. Sometimes it may be a little more obscure. Your label might not give enough information. So you can add help text. And this stuff right here, this is help text with a field, with a, with a form. It gets printed below it in that little description formatting. And so it helps people understand what they're doing. And so we can then even set like a default, like we want it to default because I want my kids to be smart to study time. And we can actually, for something like this where it's a select list, we can say, okay, only one value allowed, and that limits it to a select list like this. Or if we allow more than one value, it'll actually allow them to, uh, it'll turn it into one of those little expanded boxes where you have to control click through to select multiple ones. In the case of check boxes and radios, if it's one value allowed, it turns it into radio buttons. If it's multiple values allowed, it turns it into check boxes. So those are some of the different options. And just, you know, get in there and play around with some of this stuff, see how it affects what happens. Um, it all kind of tells you what it does. Um, and you're not really going to break anything, so. So now we've added that event type. And so now if we were to go to uh, add some content and add an event, well, now you see our node type, our node input form, now has this extra field that defaults to study time. And so now we've got an additional piece of data for this node type that extends beyond just the basic body and title field. And even this body field, uh, if you notice in that manage fields, the body is a field also. So you could actually delete that body box off of your content type if you didn't want it which there's a lot of cases for that. Um, you know, if, you're, if, if you create an image content type for people to upload images, you may or may not want them to add descriptions. So you may just want to say, you know what, I'm going to delete that body type. So they can't add text to it. All they can add is an image and a title. Um, the title has to stay pretty much. You can't, you can't get rid of that. Uh, there are some custom, there are also modules out there that will hide that field and sort of automatically give it a title if you don't want it to show up. But by default, uh, in the Drupal core system, it has to be there. And it is required. Um, so you can see, you know, that added that. Now, we have this event type, but event types need a date. So we want to add a date to it. Well, let's go take a look. So we're going to just call this 
Command A. But if we look, uh oh, we don't have an option for a date type field. Hmm. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go to the Drupal.org site. We're actually going to find a module that will do that for us. Oh, look at that. There's a date category, so let's grab that. Oh, so there's a module, a date module. Now, normally, does everybody in here know how to actually install modules on, on a Drupal site? No? Well, then let's walk through that. All right, so we're going to click the link to download it. Um, you know, we're using Drupal 7, so we want to download the one that's labeled 7.x. If you're using Drupal 6, download the one 6.x. If you download the wrong one, you will experience pain and suffering as your entire site goes blank and you don't know why. Yes. <laughs> that may or may not be why that happened to you, but. All right, so it's in my downloads folder here somewhere. There it is right there. We're going to down, we're going to unzip that. And that showed up there. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to my, this is my website folder. So in your Drupal uh, website, here, here's your, your folder with your website in it. Uh, a lot of people naturally when they're first using Drupal think, okay, I just downloaded a module. Where's, where do I put it? Oh, there's the modules folder. That is incorrect. Do not touch anything in the modules folder. In fact, when you are using Drupal, the only folder you should ever edit or change anything in is the sites folder, okay? Um, all this stuff out here is considered core, and there's a saying in Drupal that every time somebody hacks core, Drees kills a kitten. Uh, so don't do that unless you really don't like kittens. So you actually just go in to your sites folder from your, your main Drupal website, and into the all folder, and then you can drop your, your new module into the sites all modules folder. Or conversely, if you download a theme, sites all themes. Or if you get really brave and you download an install profile, you would drop it in sites all and you create a profile folder. But mainly you guys are gonna be using modules and themes, so we're gonna, gonna drop it over here paste it, and there, now it is in our system. So now we just simply go back, and we go to our modules page. And I'm gonna end up losing that stuff I put in, but that'll be okay. And unfortunately, we have to do a lot of scrolling when you're on the modules page to find stuff, but there we go. So the date time. So this is the date module we just downloaded, and it comes with a lot of stuff. Um, some of it you'll use, some of it you won't. Uh, what we're actually going to do right now is we're going to turn on the date because this is what, uh, you can see what it does, it actually creates date time field widgets. So that's what we want to be able to create a date field. And that requires the date API, so we're going to have to turn that on. And we don't want our users to actually have to type in a date. We wanted to have a nice little neat pop up, so we're going to turn on pop ups. And if you wanted to, you could use the date repeat API, which is like, oh, I have an event that repeats once a week for the next year, and give your users that option. It's hideous and it's a horrible UI, and people get confused by it. So just tell people to create that event 52 times. And then we're going to turn on the date views for what we're going to do with integrating it with views. So we're going to save it. And as I was mentioning before the session, the modules page is the 
heaviest page on a Drupal website, and it always takes the longest to load and refresh. So if you're waiting, don't worry. It's normal. So we're going to go back to our content type for event and back to our manage fields. And now we're going to add our new field. Go back to do this. One of the things I generally do in these field names is try to name them uh, with the content type they're associated with. Sometimes uh, what you'll be able to do is use an existing field um, through multiple content types. Like if you start getting really into Drupal and you start building really big websites that have 25 different node types because they've got an image and a file uploader and a uh, business profile and a um, you know user group and uh, a news article and a job posting. And, you know, I mean, it, it can get insane with how many things you end up reusing these fields a lot. But if you name them correctly, it's easy to identify them. Uh, so there we go. So now we're going to add a date. So that that date module actually added three different types of date fields. If you're looking at them and you're going, I don't know which one I should use, just use the one that makes that sound simplest, date. And so we could just use a basic text field, or we can use a pop-up calendar. And that's what we're going to do because that's easiest. All right, so once again, we see our two settings, or our field settings. And when it comes to a date field, uh, you actually have some options where you could set uh, a to date. So that means people could input starts here, ends here. Um, we're not going to do that at the moment. Uh, and then you have the option to set the granularity of that field. So if you only wanted to add a year, month, day and not give people the option of time, you could do that you know, just by unselecting hour and minute. I'm going to leave that for the moment. And time zone handling, once again, for the most part, just leave that set. Uh, it's not something you generally need to worry about. And if you get to the point where you're building a site large enough that you do need to worry about it, uh, you will probably know what you're doing by that point. Or have somebody who can help you through it. And then once again, so this brings us back to the, the settings, and it's pretty similar across all fields. Okay. Um, Okay. Okay, nothing happened. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> fertilizer bomb. <laughs> um, so you can see it's kind of the same thing. We've got required fields and we've got help text and uh, a default display. Um, once again, if you're not sure what this stuff means, read the help text. So you can see here, set the default format type and you could visit this page to alter it and change it. For now, we'll just leave it at medium. Uh, I, I kind of wish they showed a little bit more of what that actually means, but that basically means how it's going to display to the end user. Um, whether you want it to display Monday, July 26, 2011, 10 32 p.m., or whether you want it to say 7 26 11, you know, 10 32 p.m. Um, and that determined there, and you can actually set custom ones over. And then the default value, once again, kind of how we set that other one's default value to study time, we can actually set a default value here to be blank. Uh, it can default to whatever the right now is when people are entering it. Or it can default to a relative where we can just go down here and say um, something like plus two days if you want to you know, tell people to automatically enter their times. You know, if you only want stuff to be entered a week in advance, um, you could encourage people to do that by setting the default time to a week in advance. And then the input format. This mostly isn't, this would be an example of the different formats, by the way. Like you can see the different length. Um, but the, the input format isn't so much an issue um, because we're going to use a pop up calendar. And years backward and forward basically tell it how far the, the calendar can go back and forward when they're inputting things. 
And then we're going to go down here and, and look at some more things. Once again, number of values. Uh, by default, pretty much every field uh, will give you the ability to add more than one value. So, for example, a place this is really useful is files, for example. If you have a content type where people are uploading um, reports or summaries of, of their work, something they did for work, but they need to be able to attach files, well, you don't want to make the assumption that, oh, every time someone attaches a file, they're only going to have two files they can ever attach, you know, if you don't know. So you could actually set that to be unlimited and let people un upload unlimited amount of files. And um, we'll give an example of how that works in a moment. And then just some more of this stuff, again, that we've already set. So, let's set that to So we've added that. And then let's say the last thing we want to add is a file. So we'll call this event file in case they want to add a brochure about their event. And once again, that's as simple as adding a file. And our only widget is file because that's all we can really do is attach a file. And we're just going to set these in real quick. So once again, they're all the, they're all pretty much the same. But the files you can tell it what type of files you want. Um, if you want, you can just. I'm pretty sure you can get up the star character, and we'll accept all of them. But let's just say text, PDF, doc, XOS. You can set up a file directory. Um, generally, if you just leave it, it'll, it'll automatically upload to your public files. You could actually set things like, oh, I only want people to upload a certain size file. Or um, on images, when we, when we get to those, you'll see you can actually set the maximum dimensions. And over here, we want to say we want them to upload unlimited because we don't know how many files they're going to have. Okay, so now we've got our event field set up, and so what we want to do is go and create a couple events. So we should create a few events. Um, and so see, some of this stuff it, it stays the same. You know, the title stays the same. We've already taken a look at this. Down here is our date where you know, we can set stuff and it comes, because of that pop-up, makes it nice and easy to set a date. So we're gonna set that and then with the time, it's got a little widget where you can just click the hour and then up and down arrow key or you can type it in and then go over that and set that. And we're gonna add some files. See, it's actually so strict that because that's a .x file, it won't let it. Let's see if we have any text or PDF. Probably don't. Yeah, but it actually won't let you add a .x. It only lets you add .doc. .doc. Oh. We're going to upload it, and that actually works. Like you see, it works in the background. So now we've added one file, and now we can add another one. Is that configurable to allow Yeah, I, I could go back and configure it. Um, it was in one of those field settings, right? I just that's not something a lot of people really actually think about is that there's doc and then there's docx, there's ppt and then there's pptx, there's 
XLS and XLSX, because Microsoft loves pain and suffering. Um, so you see, you know, we've actually added now two files to this event. We've added our date, we've set our event type, and we've got our title, so now we can save it. And so now we've got our event type here. And you can see our body here, our event type, our event date. Um, one of the things that we can do, and I think there's actually going to be a, a session that goes more in depth into this, um, on displaying content types, is you can actually manage the display also. So just managing fields actually manages the order that they show up in on the form. Managing the display manages the order that they show up in on your display. So if we want it to show up just like our form, we have to alter that display also. And then you can even drag stuff down and hide it. But we don't want to do that. But you can change the labels, you can change some of the, the formats. Like I mentioned, the fields have an input widget, which is the form where you actually like upload the file or select the date. And then they have a default or a formatting widget, so where we can decide how we want to display that date. So we can say if we want to display the date as time ago, does this no good in this case, or long, medium, short, once again, those are those different date formats. So we'll save that. Yes? There are ways to handle that. That is a little bit more advanced. Um, there are some modules that can handle that, although it can be a, a little bit hard sometimes because when people are doing things in Excel files, they aren't always doing them in a normalized fashion where they might type their data in one way on one row and in the next row they might type it in another way or they might miss a comma and that can really screw up uh, trying to insert that into a database if you know we're trying to bulk do that. Um, so that does involve a, a little bit more... Uh, what's that? Yeah, and, it, and there are some modules that handle that, but that, that is a little bit higher level and, and would probably require... Yeah, it's not definitely not our own possibilities. Um, I, I just had to build something like that for a business requirement last week. Um, so it's definitely possible. All right. So I'm going to actually add a couple more events real quick. Just so we have some data to work with. This one. One more event. <coughs> all right, so now we've got our events added to our system. We've got three different events we've added in. They've all got a different date. We've got some different event types. But if you'll notice, you know, we go to our home page, how do we find them? You know, could we search for them? Yeah, we probably could, but that's not really useful to the user. So how do we actually take that data that we've entered and make it display in a useful manner to our users? And that's where views comes in. So to get to views, we've already uh, installed it and turned it on. Views is actually underneath the structure. And it's down here, there's views. And so you see we have some options. There's sort of some default views that are available. Um, and you could go through and you could enable some of these. And maybe for, if you're doing a date, you would want to enable this date browser and it would let you sort through nodes by when they were created and such. But we want to actually uh, create a list of our events uh, from the next event going downward to the furthest out event. So let's add a new view. 
and we'll call this events because that makes sense. And we could add a description if we want. Um, that just sort of that description only shows up on the back end, uh, it's so people can understand what your view is, but it doesn't ever show up in the front end. And so, in this sort of basic screen, we want to show content, which is notes, of the type event. And we could even um, sort it by newest first, oldest first, title. But we're actually going to set it by unsorted because it doesn't have in that default list by event date yet, but we will get there. So our page title is going to be events. It automatically creates this page title based off what we called it. And it automatically gives it a path. We can change this though, like if we wanted to call it calendar, we could change this to calendar and we could give it the path of demo.qq slash calendar. But we'll stick with events. And the format that we want. We could say we want to do an unformatted list. We want to do a table. We want to do a grid, an HTML list. Um, we're going to stick with unformatted list, and what that basically means is it just displays them one after another. If you wanted to do like an HTML list, that'll actually do like a bulleted list. Um, if you wanted to do a jump menu, uh, out of the box, that's, it creates a little uh, select box like this that'll allow it to link to a different page. Um, but generally, the ones you're going to use most, will, you probably won't ever use jump menu. I think I've only used it once in five years. Table you'll use a lot because tables obviously are a good way to display data. Yes? Yes. Uh, no, these are the different content types. So these are the, you know, we've got articles, basic page, event, or we could actually create one that will display it, all of them. But this is a filter that's going to filter down our data, our data results. And then we can tell it how many to display. Um, what we're actually going to, we're, we're just going to leave this to set. Uh, we could set some stuff up to display it as teasers, posts, titles, titles with links, or fields. Um, and we'll do the we'll go to the fields one in a minute because we'll create a table. But for now, we're going to tell it to create ten, and we're going to create a menu link. And this is actually going to put it up into our main menu, and we're going to continue and edit. Okay, and then we're going to save it. Actually, we'll save it so you guys have a chance to see what it's done so far. So now you'll see we actually have a page on here that we've created that has our new events in it. The problem is it's just showing them uh, by when they were created, and it's not showing them by when the actual event, uh, when the actual event date is. So we're going to change that. So we can just go back and edit this view, pop back up. And so this is our view. Um, you can see it's got these different things, the title, the format that we've kind of already done. Um, and any of these links, all you do is click on them, and it'll bring up the little thing for you to edit it, and then you just uh, can save it. So you see down here uh, the different filters. Uh, the, the question he just asked about content type event like I said, created a filter. So we could add more filters if we wanted to, to limit um, to limit our events to only events that have, if we wanted to limit it by event type. So we could add that filter and configure it. Yeah? Is there a way to do orbs in that area? Yes, there is. I'll show you in just a moment. So when you create a filter, what you have is you have the option to expose this filter, which I'll show you what that does. Um, but we first we set it, and we can say it is one of any or all of those. Um, so if we wanted to just limit it to pool parties, we would set that and apply it. 
What we want to do, though, is we really want people to be able to choose themselves. So when we expose it, what it does is it creates a little form that people can filter your results by. So we're going to apply that. And so that creates some filters, and you can see the ones that are exposed. Exposed means that the person who's viewing your data, the person who, who's actually viewing that view, I know it sounds redundant, uh, actually has the option to apply the filters themselves. All right, so we want to add a sort. Uh, we want to be able to sort our events by uh, their event date. So what we do is we use the content and we find where is it event date right there. So we want to apply that sort. So we add it and configure it. And so we want to sort it, I believe, by ascending. That means earliest to, to later. So we're going to apply it. Now you can actually get a preview down here of what it'll look like on the page over here. Um, and you can see that now that we've applied that sort by event date, even though the event dates aren't showing here, you can see that it changed the order because it was showing 1, 2, 3 based on when they were created. Now it's showing 1, 3, 2 because of their the event dates that we added to them. And it's also got this filter right here that our users can actually use and they can sort it to only show pool parties if you don't have any apparently. Let's see study time. Oh, look, there's a study time. Or a park day. There's our park days. So you can see it's really kind of a really powerful way to, to get your data out of the system and then determine how you want it to display. But one thing that you've noticed probably is that let it save, is that this doesn't really do us any good because this isn't displaying the event date. And we want, you know, it, it shows when it was created, but it doesn't show what the actual event date is because we're just showing a uh, clipped form of the, the actual content type. So what we can actually do is we can change how it displays that data by using this setting right here, fields. So you see it says the selected style or row format does not utilize fields. So we're going to change uh, how it uses it. And how you use fields is you change this setting right here from teasers. Sorry, I'm clicking around on things. Um, you change it from content to fields. And so it's still querying, it's still pulling that content data out, but now we're just changing it so that it shows um, the fields rather than just a clipped content. And then also we're going to actually change, since we're showing fields, we don't, let's, let's show it in a table because that's a nice pretty way to show fields. So let's change it from our unformatted list to a table. And you can see there's different settings that are available to us um, within the table. I'm just going to leave those for now. And so by default, it adds the title. And so we're going to add a couple extra fields. And we probably want to add our date field. We probably want to add our event type field. And Let's add a file. Let's add the files in case it adds the files. And let's configure it. All right. So the first thing when you add a field is you, you come to this thing, and now we can decide uh, how we want it to show. So the label is basically uh, going to show right before the field. It's just going to be a label, just like um, it would, like it would be in the the basic uh, view of that node, um, or in a table the label actually applies as a table header. It doesn't show next to the data, but it shows at the top of the table. And then so we've got, once again, our things like our formatters, how we want it to display. But we're just pretty much going to leave it at the default. 
because that's the easiest thing right now. Um, so for our files, we actually want to display as I want to do a table and table. So we're just going to leave it at generic files in our event type. Leave it at default. So now you can see we have a created a table here. Uh, with, with our title, our event date, files if they've, they're on there, and our event type. And on a table, if we wanted to, um, you can see it applies our default sort that we added here, but we also have options in a table to go in and make any and all of the fields uh, sortable. And what that does is that actually allows click sorting on a table. So we'll do that. Save. Save. So now we've got a table here and what you can do is you can see like we can click sort our table. Sort it up. Sort it down. Sort it by event type, ascending and descending. How many of you, let me ask you, how many of you that have come from PHP or coding have ever had to actually code custom SQL queries to get this features? How many of you were ever able to do it in 15 minutes like that? Well, you're, you're a rock star. Because, um, you know, to, to be able to, to do all that in custom programming and have it output, you know, and all program all the HTML and then, you know, do all the ands and ors into your SQL is a pain in the butt when you're doing it by hand. Drupal and views handles all this. In a quick UI, we can build a table of our data. Um, what would happen is if we had more than... Uh, more than 10 different content types, it would automatically create a pager down here. Um, you know, so it really, it really opens up the flexibility of what you can do. The other thing that it uh, has is these different things called displays. You could actually display your data as a page, like we just did. We could display it as a block. Um, so the, the, the little blocks of content, like if you wanted to create a recent comments block, you could just create a, a, a block and use the views to pull in a list of comments that were, were recently left and actually link to those comments. Or recent posts on a blog. Um, you know, and you just use this, this, uh, this UI to be able to filter, apply the fields that you want, format it in the way you want with tables or lists. Um, and the, what you can really do with the different formats, too, gets exponentially large because, like I said, there's things for slideshows, there's things for maps, where you can plot content on a map, on a Google map, with the little, even with the little click on uh, icons with the info bubble that pops up. Um, and you can do it all through this UI where you don't have to do, I don't want to say any custom coding because you may need to do some CSS and, and stuff like that to make it pretty, but you know you can you can really do all the SQL and all the heavy lifting uh, without actually having to code. So, for example, like I was saying with the pager, set that to one, and now it'll actually it'll build a pager for us. And now we can just page through our content. It does it all on the fly. Or we can filter it down to park days. And now we only have two. So it's really quick. It's easy. Uh, it, it really expands the Drupal universe as to what you can do. And there's this is the most highly downloaded module of uses. Um, and it's that way for a reason, and there's a lot of modules that extend it and extend its functionality. Uh, you know, if we just go and look at
the use slideshow. You know, we can create a slideshow using views. Um, you know, there's all, all sorts of different things that, that utilize the views framework and allow you to, to, to get that data that you've stuck in out of your system and display it to users. So that is, that is essentially views and fields uh, in a nutshell, in a quick nutshell. Um, there is so much more that you can do with it, and it is so much more extendable beyond that and powerful. Um, are there any questions? And I'm sure there are. Yes? Quick question. Do you have any suggestions on if you have numerical data you want to tabulate? Is there ways, is there modules that you have? There is, there's a module called Views Calc that'll uh, sort of calculate that data up. Um, I haven't used it in a while, so I don't know how stable it is and how excellent it is, but yeah, you can do that. Yes? Uh, that is a little bit more of an advanced question, but uh, these has something called relationships, which are essentially a table joint. Um, so you can add, there's actually a whole advanced panel over here, uh, where you can add relationships that allow you to, to, to join MySQL tables and, and such. When you make the choice list for the types of choices for the event type, mm -hmm. does that actually create, um, and I'm more familiar with these types of these, does that create like or is that just a different simple way of doing it? I just did that simply. You could do that with taxonomy. Uh, I just wanted to do it quickly. So, all right. Is another question anything? Okay. So that's views and then Starbucks card. Who's who has a birthday closest to today? Tomorrow. Seriously, tomorrow? Oh, nice. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 